drop the elbow. <laughs> This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. We're going to talk about Brandon's vaping again. Um, we've been monitoring your vaping habits, Brandon. We want to have a oh, conversation God. with you. No, this is going to be about Vape the Musical. Sketchwork springs this action for a judgment declaring that its play, Vape the Musical, does not infringe on defendant's copyright in the musical play Grease, because Vape is a parody of Grease, and therefore constitutes fair use under the Copyright Act of 1976. Vape and Grease are incorporated herein for reference, and a performance of Vape is available online. So, Vape the Musical seems to be... A Grease parody where they vape instead of smoke. Um, I can't, I, I of course could not tell you whether its contents are parodical or not, because I haven't seen its contents. But this is going to be their complaint. So there you go. If you would like to go see Vape the Musical, the you've gotten a free copy from the from the court documents. Grease is a popular musical that was set in the 1950s at fictional Rydell High School. The story follows a group of teenagers as they navigate adolescence, peer pressure, personal values, sexual exploration, love, and friendship. Grease has been performed on both stage and screen, and exploitations include a long run on Broadway and a popular feature film starring John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. On information and belief, Grease and various derivative works based thereon are registered with the Copyright Office. The following is a synopsis. Do we want to keep going with this, do we, or do we know the plot of Grease? All right, let's just, let's just consider that everybody knows the plot of Grease, and if you don't, then you can go watch it, because it's, it's actually pretty awesome. It's a classic. I, I highly recommend it. Vape is an award-winning, approximately one-hour-long parody of Grease. Roughly following the story arc of Grease, Vape begins with Danny and Sandy on the beach at the end of the summer. It is immediately apparent that Vape is a parody. Danny. Oh, Sandy, I can't believe the summer's already over. We haven't even had sex yet. Sandy. I know, Danny. I appreciate you not pressuring me into anything I don't want to do. I'm going to miss you so much when I go back to wherever it is I came from. They kiss. Danny. What do you say, Sandy? How about that hand job, finally? Sandy. Oh, Danny, don't ruin this special moment. Danny. I don't care, Sandy. I think I heart you. Sandy. I love you, too. The dog has come to see what the commotion is. Danny. Oh, wow. I said I heart you. I didn't drop the L-bomb. Sandy. I heart you too, Danny. The lights go down and credits appear on a video screen. When the lights go up, Sandy and Frenchie are walking together outside of Rydell. Frenchie explains to Sandy that Rydell is the one school where everybody randomly busts into choreographed song and dance, and we all look at least 30. Frenchie tells Sandy, nobody cares about your backstory, and when the hashtag pink squad comes on stage all vaping e-cigarettes, Frenchie introduces Sandy by saying, she just moved here and no one knows why. The girls started talking about what they did the past summer, with one of them saying she went on 500 Tinder dates leading to a joke about oral sex. Sandy tells the Pink Squad about her summer love, explaining that we fell in love but didn't make any plans to keep in touch. I'm hoping he'll just friend me on Facebook. Sandy is asked, what was his name? You know in the off chance that he'll go to this supremely large high school. What's his name? You know, in the off chance he goes to this Supremely Lodge High School. <laughs> His name is Danny. Danny Zuko! <laughs> the girls then comment on modern dating apps, and the scene ends with Rizzo telling Sandy to meet us at the pep rally tonight. We're going to give you a bigger surprise than your parents moving across the world without any notice. K-bye. 
Danny, Kanicki, Putsy, Sonny, Duty, and the T-Bros then all appear on the stage, vaping e-cigarettes and talking about their respective summers. Kanicki tells his friends that he worked at a vape shop so that he could earn money to buy a car. Quote, I'm not a lazy millennial like the rest of you. Duty traveled abroad to find himself and also started a YouTube channel. When Sonny asks Danny about his summer, Danny says, it was all right. I tricked a girl into falling in love with me and that he has the snaps to prove it. The cast then breaks into a song called Summer Snaps. Who wants double summer snaps? Oh, what, oh, what, oh, what? Rather than being a song about innocent summer love, Summer Snaps is about how modern dating involves nude selfies, social media, and dating apps like Tinder and Bumble. After the song, the T-Bros discuss going to the pep rally and Putsy says he is only going to inappropriately touch cheerleaders. Then, the play transitions to the school principal and her assistant making an announcement welcoming the students back for another school year. She announces that this year teachers are all packing heat and encourages the students to attend the pep rally that night, right? <laughs> the next scene is the pep rally where the hashtag pink squad approaches the t-bros rizzo says hey zucko we got a little surprise for you danny says oh yeah you girls ready for a threesome the hashtag pink squad then pushes sandy in front of danny like in greece danny is at first giddy to see sandy but then changes his attitude when he realizes that his friends are watching danny was just about to send you a facebook friend request but then says actually i'm not on facebook anymore i like to stay off the grid too many bitches trying to get up in my business Sandy, confused, asks Danny why he is talking that way, and Danny responds, I don't know, baby, around these parts I'm a bad boy with a reputation to uphold. In fact, last year I was voted most likely to slip you a roofie. Sandy responds, this seems problematic and kind of rapey, and she runs off stage with the girls following her. The show then briefly transitions to the principal and her assistant who are discussing a police search of the school for opioids. This, like, literally happens near me. The audience learns that the police found a lot of drugs, all of which belong to the principal. Vape then quickly transitions to the slumber party scene where Sandy and the hashtag pink squad discuss sexting, fat shaming, drink alcohol. Sandy agrees to let Frenchie pierce her ears with a dirty needle because FOMO... What is FOMO? Oh, fear of missing out. Like in Greece, Rizzo then makes fun of Sandy for being different. Rizzo says, Can you believe this Sandy chick? I mean, first of all, she is death avert. And second of all, she doesn't vape. And third of all, why can't she just go back to where it is that she came from? <laughs> yeah, she's different. And as we know, different is bad. Yep. <laughs> The girls then sing a song about Sandy, which starts, Look at me, I'm Sandra D. Flat-chested, nothing to see, won't even vape or get a tattoo, I can't, I'm Sandra D. Sandy returns to the scene, bleeding effusively from the ear piercing, and realizes that the other girls are making fun of her. There was literally a thin curtain between us! <laughs> One of the girls then realizes that the boys are outside exposing themselves, and Rizzo admits she texted Kaneki to come get her because she is bored AF and has got to go sit on some faces. Kaneki and Rizzo then have unprotected sex. Kaneki was too embarrassed to buy a condom at the drugstore, but it is interrupted by Leo from a rival gang and his girlfriend, Cha-Cha. Leo and Kaneki get into an over-the-top juvenile argument, which sets the scene for the later car race at Thunder Road. Kaneki says, Kind of like Rizzo, this car might not look like much, but after I get done committing felony-level theft, we're going to turn this bad boy into a Thunder Road champion. Leo, okay, whatever you say. I'll see you at Thunder Road, prickface. Kinnicky, see you there, dickwad. Leo, in a while, penis. Breach? Wouldn't that be breath? I'm guessing that was breath. Kinnicky, I'll see you on the road, you little chode. Leo, meet you at the race, you fugly jizz face. 
wow. The next scene is in a mechanic shop. The T-Boys are doing a vlog about hybrid cars and then start working on Kenneke's car to prepare for the race against Leo at Thunder Road. Kenneke, boys, we gotta prove our manhood by turning this hunk of junk into a champion. Danny, you know, Kenneke, this car is a real piece of shit that you worked super hard for. I'm gonna relentlessly make fun of it until it's fixed up nice, then I'm gonna steal it from you and take credit for how badass it is. Kenneke says that seems fair. <laughs> this sounds like one of those, like, uh, I forced an AI to watch a video for, <laughs> and then for a thousand hours. You know what I mean? Maybe. Like, <laughs> yeah. The T-Bros then break into a song called Prius Lightning Part 1, which starts with Danny singing why this car is going to be misogynistic, problematic, highly illegal, why it's going to be Prius Lightning. This car right here, it's misogynistic. <laughs> Rather than brag about how fast the car can travel, the T-Bros sing about the car's fuel efficiency and minimal environmental impact. The next scene is back at Rydell High, where Danny runs to catch up with Sandy. He apologizes to Sandy for his past behavior, explaining, I have a reputation here, and due to my shitty upbringing, I'm not allowed to look vulnerable or like I care about women in front of my boys. Sandy says that she understands. And lucky for you, society has taught me to give an unlimited amount of chances <laughs> Danny then asks Sandy to the dance, and Sandy gives him an ultimatum saying, I only date guys who play sports. If you can clean up your act and join a team by the end of the week, I'll go with you. Danny agrees to do it, observing that's an oddly specific and unrealistic request. <laughs> Rizzo and Sandy then have an awkward encounter where Sandy tells Sandy, sounds like another typo, that she could really use a friend, but Sandy quickly excuses herself. Rizzo then breaks into a song entitled, I Probably Just Need to Poo, which ends with her asking, Am I pregnant? Or just full? <laughs> The next scene is Danny with the athletics coach who tries to sexually molest Danny. I gotta make sure your manhood's healthy before I get you out there on my feet. No, no, shit. Danny wants to make himself a better man and impress Sandy. The coach says, as we all know, playing sports is literally the only way a person can improve himself and that sex with beautiful women is the primary reason young men should participate in athletics. Vape then transitions to Frenchie, who is dropped out of high school. Sitting in a coffee shop, taking an online class on her laptop, her friend from the Ping Squad enters and the two of them try to identify the sender of the dick pic. The show abruptly transitions to a guardian angel, played by the coach actor, singing a song called Online School Dropout, which encourages Frenchie to return to high school. The next scene is the school dance. Sandy is proud of Danny for joining a sports team and for cleaning himself up, and she admits to being nervous because she does not know any of the choreographed dances that literally everyone in the school knows. Danny tells Sandy not to worry, you'll magically pick up on those moves in no time. Danny and Sandy dance together, but then Danny ends up dancing with Cha-Cha and they win the competition. This makes Cha-Cha's boyfriend, Leo, get angry face emoji, but the two make up and then go to have sex. In the next scene, Rizzo tells the hashtag pink squad that her period is late. The news that Rizzo is pregnant spreads to Kenneke, who says that Rizzo should get checked out by a doctor, and then breaks the theatrical fourth wall with the audience, advocating for comprehensive sex education in high school and donating to Planned Parenthood. A commercial for Thunder Road Racing then appears on screen promoting the race between Kenneke's Prius Lightning and Leo in his car. After the video ends, Kenneke, Kenneke tells Danny that Danny is his best friend and Danny asks, wait, are you gay? But Kenneke gets hit in the head looking for a good luck charm. The Pink Squad has just given him a used Nuva ring. I think that's a contraceptive ring, is that right? And Danny agrees to drive for him. I don't think I can drive. Nick, uh, I'll do anything for you. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Did you just kiss me? Did you just tell me you were gay like two minutes ago? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. 
Danny and Leo then race, which is crudely reflected in a video of two toy cars racing. Danny wins the race and Sandy asks Frenchie for her help. Sandy. Hey Frenchie, come here for a minute. Frenchie, what's up Sandy? How'd you like that extremely dangerous dick measuring contest? Sandy, oh Frenchie, it was exhilarating. I need your help. Frenchie, yeah for what? Sandy, I've made a decision. I want Danny back. Frenchie, I'm going to change everything about myself for him. Frenchie, sarcastically, that's so great to hear. You definitely won't regret this later, said no one ever. Sandy, exactly. Frenchie, let's go to my house for this totally unnecessary makeover. This show briefly transitions to the school principal making an announcement about the graduation carnival and how it's unbelievable we've made it through the entire school year in what felt like an hour. The principal wishes everyone a terrific summer and then everyone is at the graduation carnival. Sandy, who has had a makeover, enters. She no longer dresses conservatively. Sandy is vaping, dresses provocatively, and, has ex and explains that she has experienced a sexual awakening while also abandoning my identity and values. Danny, meanwhile, impresses Sandy because he lettered in track wearing his letter jacket. The cast then breaks into a song, You're the One That I Want Right Now, the title reflecting modern attitudes on casual sex. Danny's excitement takes a different form in vape than in Greece. He sings, I am hard and cannot hide it. We are so demonetized on this one. Cause these pants are a little too tight and that vibe that you're projecting, why it's penis perplexing. After the song, Rizzo observes, isn't it great you both became something you're not just to please your high school crush. Kenneke agrees, the best relationships are built on hiding your true self as much as humanly possible. Am I right? Rizzo then tells Kenneke that she is not actually pregnant. She just misread the results of the pregnancy test. In fact, the first time around, I peed on a thermometer. The cast then has a big final scene, one more choreographed dance for old time's sake that they intend to make as unrealistic as possible. They sing a song entitled, We're Totes Amaze Balls. We're totes amaze balls like so -so -so which has lyrics written primarily in millennial slang and then vape ends. Comparing vape and Grease, it is apparent that vape is a parody of Grease. Vape uses millennial slang, pop culture, a modern lens, exaggeration to comment on the plot structure issues and themes of Grease and to criticize its misogynistic and sexist elements. Vape, which was written and directed by women and has a largely female cast, re-examines Greece from a female perspective in the hashtag MeToo era and exposes how the humor and rape culture elements of Greece have not aged well. Vape directly criticizes Greece's happy ending, where a woman completely changes who she is in order to please a man. At the same time, Vape recognizes that modern youth still navigate complex issues relating to sex, drugs, and peer pressure, just in different forms from their 1950s counterparts. Vape not only comments upon controversial themes in Greece, it also explores whether modern society has progressed at all by pointing to current systemic issues that still exist based on the misogyny of the era in which Greece was written and is set. Vape also humorously pokes fun. There is no Ellen Polks. Vape also humorously pokes fun at various absurdities in Greece. For example, Sandy inexplicably does not return home at the end of the summer. Everyone miraculously breaks into song and choreographed dance, and at least in the movie, appears to be older than teenagers. And Greece's abrupt plot transitions. In 2018, Vape was performed in Atlanta, Georgia. Due to overwhelming audience reaction to these performances, Sketchworks arranged for Vape to be performed in New York. Performances of Vape were scheduled for August 8th through 10th, 2019 at the Improv Asylum NYC Theater uh, on 26th Street in Manhattan. Defendants or their agent Concord learned about the scheduled performances of Vape, and on July 29th, 2019, Concord emailed a season 
cease and desist letter to, among other people, Sketchworks principals and the theater claiming that vape infringed defendants' rights in Greece and demanded that Sketchworks and the theater immediately cease and desist. Concord's letter also demanded an accounting for past performances of vape. That's a financial accounting so that they're, they, they want to know how much money the thing has made. So, so vape is the plaintiff on this one, not the defendant. Right, so Sketchworks is not being sued. Sketchworks, the creators of vape, is being threatened, and they've also already had legal stuff happen in the real world, but they haven't received a complaint or anything, so they're going to start the process. They're going to file a complaint. They're going to ask for a declaratory judgment of non-infringement. They're going to ask a judge to rule that their parody is a real parody and not infringing. And in the process, they should be able to get their fees and costs paid for, and probably these actual damages for the losses of the performances that were canceled. On July 31st, 2019, Sketchworks responded to the cease and desist letter objecting to the infringement claim and advising that vape is fair use. Sketchworks response included citations to relevant case law, including Lombardo v. Dr. Seuss Enterprises, affirmed by the Second Circuit uh, on July 6, 2018. That's the Grinch parody. That's where the Grinch parody uh, beat. That was the Who's Holiday Grinch parody. The district court correctly determined that the play is a parody imitating the style of the Grinch for comedic effect and to mock the naive, happy world of the Who's. So uh, I think did we do? I think we did a video on that. If we did, we'll make a link for you right here. However, on or about August 2nd, the theater canceled the performances of Vape that were scheduled for the next week. On August 5th, defendant's attorney, Ronald Taft, emailed Sketchworks' attorney and rejected Sketchworks' position that Vape is fair use, describing the marketing and promotion of Vape as blatant infringements of my client's trademarks and copyrights, and asserting that Vape's directors and not its authors' true purpose and intent of Vape was not parody, criticism, or comment. Defendant's attorney represented that defendants were willing to reconsider if Sketchworks briefed him on the fair use doctrine as it relates to vape. However, it was too little too late because performances had already been canceled. Additionally, it appeared unlikely that even if Sketchworks briefed defendants on the fair use doctrine, that defendants would actually reconsider or otherwise undertake a good faith analysis of whether vape is a parody of Greece. I have issues with someone making a copyright claim and then saying that they don't understand the fairy do use doctrine and could you please explain it to me. That's not rule 1.1 competent and I wouldn't expect that to survive a disciplinary complaint. I don't think that they were saying that they don't understand fair use doctrine. I think that they were trying they were trying to get a meeting together to have them explain how they thought okay. the fair use doctrine applied in this situation. Then I look forward, I'll put it this way. Then I look forward to that attorney signing the papers answering this complaint and if that attorney puts forth a a theory of his case that this is not some that this is not a fair use then i think someone can explore a rule 11 violation Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 11 requires the attorney that signs the papers to have done their due diligence have conduct, conducted an investigation. A due diligence investigation does not consist of asking opposing counsel to do it for you. He's supposed to do a due diligence investigation before he signs any legal papers. Now, by making a legal threat, did he commit a Rule 11 violation? Nope. You have to sign legal papers and or file them before a court or whatever. And as we said, Sketchworks is the complaining party here, and it's... Uh, owners of Greece who are the defendants. I'm just saying that we're dangerously close to some sort of uh, rules of professional conduct violation or or some kind of Rule 11 violation, because this is obviously, we are obviously already on the side of this is a fair use violation and Lens v. Universal. Th this could be the case that establishes, if this goes up to appeal, this could be the case that establishes that Lens v. Universal applies in the, what is it, Second Circuit are we in here? On uh, information and belief, before sending their letters, defendants or their agents did not form, hey, what did we just say? Did not form a subjective good faith belief that vape is not permitted by law. That's the requirement of Lens v. Universal and misrepresentation law. Nonetheless, defendants successfully halted performances of vape and caused Sketchworks to suffer monetary damages. Although defendants' conduct caused performances in August 2019 to be canceled, Sketchworks' desires to perform
form and otherwise exploit vape in the future, including in Manhattan, accordingly. Sketchworks seeks a declaratory judgment of fair use so that it may perform and otherwise exploit vape without further delay. So here's the first cause of action. You ask for a judge to declare that your thing is your copyright your parody or whatever is a fair use or your use is non-infringing and this will help preserve it can't guarantee but it can help preserve the your ability to recover fees and costs as well as your actual damages i super like line 65 there can you read that out plaintiff repeats and realleges the foregoing paragraphs yeah so a lot of the complaints that we read will literally repeat everything that they've written before in like slightly different language for their causes of actions and stuff. Yeah. So it's like 10 more pages longer than it needs to be. I like that they just said, read above. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. And believe it or not, they don't actually even have to do that. That's no longer a requirement for federal court. But sometimes it's so ingrained in the process that, that attorneys pass it down anyway, from mentor to student to mentor to student, um, that, that you need to incorporate, you need to have one of these paragraphs to incorporate all the following facts into your cause of action. Well, there was an age, there was a day or something when if a judge didn't see that incorporation line, they simply might disregard the above facts and only go with the facts that are below. So that, that's a bit obtuse. I'm a bit surprised that that was what was done in the interests of fairness and justice, but whatever. So anyway, we now we're doing a declaratory judgment of fair use to preserve both the right to have an actual fair use, but also very likely preserve the right to, to recover attorney's fees, costs, and monetary damages. There should be other causes of action in here. Now that's it, that's all they're asking for. A declaration that vape is fair use, attorney's fees, costs, and I'm not even sure, are they? It does say for other and further relief as the court deems just and proper, which means they have left it open that they could ask for the damages from the lost performances. I have a feeling that that the owners of Greece are going to end up paying for those missed performances. What do you think? That sounds to me like it's a really funny play. So Tactical's not here, but what Tactical brought up earlier was that the only way that maybe this couldn't be a parody, like the defendants said, what if there was something about the branding? If the branding, now the branding doesn't have to make clear it's a parody, right? We saw that in the in the parody story with the Parma police thing, but I, I guess it's still possible to, that there could, since we haven't seen the branding, may, maybe there's something with the branding. I'm assuming it's not. I'm assuming that it was that it was also parodical branding. That is our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This has been the Sunday, August 11th episode of Lawful Masses. With me in the virtual studio is Brandon, our community manager. Thank you very much for being here, Brandon. And thank you to our supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash law at the $500 level. Thank you very much to Joshua Davis from Tanda Pay. We're working on Mr. Davis's video and uh, hope, hope to have that out before I go to uh, Luxembourg. We'll see. It might, might still be working on it by the time when I go. Thank you to the $50 plus supporters, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Jan Negray, Blackleaf, Spirit Bear, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wazatsky, Not Mike, Joe Tyson, and King Macro. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me, along with the other supporters. All of you will be in the description of the videos that drop. Anyway, love you all. Have a good night and a good week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Bye. Elsa, Nico. Nico. <laughs> Come here. Hi. Come down. I like your call. Ow. Nico, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good, man. You just... Hey, Nico, sit. 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 There you go. Okay. I'm gonna leave you. You have to... Nico. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the bag? I'm gonna say goodbye to you first. Okay, Nico, because I'm leaving. I got a toy for you and your sister. Which one do you want? Bear? No, not bear. Pick one.
Well, <laughs> yeah, she commits. Yeah. She wants that one, and that's it. <laughs> Ilsa's oh just God. gone. <laughs> I hope you weren't going to say here. goodbye to Ilsa. Come here. <laughs> Nico. Come on. Does it squeak? Yeah. Yes. Ah.